Oh, hi, it's Rob. And I'm out on the, uh, the dog porch today, uh, mostly because it's the only place I have that's big enough to deal with this. My TV decided to stop working. And frankly, I don't watch a lot of TV. We usually have a date night where we'll sit down and watch a bunch of stuff, but date night's been uh, off for a couple months because uh, Trisha got a new puppy. And so uh, we only had it this week after a few months and went to turn the TV on and there was nothing. Uh, the power goes on. I can see the power LED go on and off uh, with the remote, but there is nothing on the screen. There is no, you know, there's, and there's no HDMI input, there's no on-screen input, there's no help menu, anything like that. So I'm going to fiddle with it a little bit and see if I can get something to work on it. Uh, right now I have something feeding one of the HDMI sources, but my suspicion is that the uh, one of the uh, logic boards is fried in there, and I'm not sure which one, so it might be worth taking a look. Uh, the other thing is uh, taking it in for a repair. The repair for it would cost more than uh, replacing the TV. So this is a we're going to see what we can do to bring this back to life. All right, the first thing they did was they uh, replaced the batteries in the remote because that's, you know, always a pretty good step. But uh, I am pretty sure it's not the remote that's the issue. You know, there's a white LED that goes on down here to turn it when it uh, is on. So it's off. We're on. There we go. Okay, the LED is on, TV is on, and no matter what I do, if I hit, you know, the guide, action menu, input, sync menu, nothing shows up so this is uh, definitely something is is hosed in here there is nothing normally i mean even if the uh, the system was you know if the input wasn't working right you could still haul up the, uh, the display and do some you know like a programming display and things like that and there is nothing uh, so I'm pretty sure that one of the logic boards is dead. So I guess it's done. We'll take the back off. Can you help me with that, Piper? All right. They have the all the screws and everything identified, which is nice. I'm going to unplug. I'll unplug that little beastie. One thing to note, I don't know if you can see this very well, but there's this marking here on the side of the screws. All the ones that have this split arrow are intended to be taken out at the same time for the back. These are slightly different. I believe these are for the mounting feet, so I don't need to take those out. Now there's another thing that I've done here. Uh, there are two kinds of screws. Well, there's technically three kinds of screws holding this back on. Most of them are this kind with the flat washer. There are a couple in here that are plastic screws. I have these two marked with this green type. And then the ones down here are these with the washers in them. They're larger screws. Uh, so we got that down. Now I like keeping it in these trays because 
I can put the covers on and, you know, if the dogs knock them over or anything like that, I'm not going to lose the screws. So this is what the back of your TV looks like. Well, it's the back, what the back of my TV looks like anyway. Uh, this is the power supply end. This provides all the power for the, the boards, uh, the display, the backlight, everything else. This is the interface board on the bottom. This has, looks like the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module down here. Speakers. And then this is the main guts of the TV right here. Um, this is the LCD panel display. Uh, power supply to the board. And that's it. And I believe that this is the one that has uh, finally given up the ghost. So I'm going to see if I can find a part number on there and maybe pull it off. See if I can get a uh, get a replacement for it. In January 2019, this was manufactured. So, not quite three years old. Kind of disappointed it didn't last longer. Sony is usually a fairly good product. So here's the main control board uh, out of the TV. Haven't been able to find any really good numbers on it, possibly there. Uh, there's really not a lot on here to identify it. I'm not seeing anything that's obvious, you know, obviously wrong, but with an electronic board like this, it's almost impossible to tell anymore. Pretty sure this is a heat sink for or pressure plate at least for processor that's underneath here. Well, I've got it buttoned back up. Uh, it's not quite good. I didn't get this top part latched and uh, got a couple of screws that are taped up in there, but hopefully this won't be uh, a part too long. Uh, hopefully I can get a replacement board and get this TV back up and running. All right, the replacement board finally came. This is the old one, this is the new one. They are identical as far as it goes. So I'm going to take the back off of this and swap this board in and then we'll boot it up and see what happens. All right, so a cool tool tip. Uh, if you are trying to remove screws that are difficult to pull out because they're deep inside of plastic, if you have a screwdriver like this, put a magnet on it. Got all these. Oh, here's a good one. And it just sticks to it. Here we go. The back is off. So now I'll try and install this back in. I'm going to pull these screws out. Uh, and of course, try and do all the proper screwing to make this uh, fit where it's supposed to. Because that's always fun. All right, one of the things I want to show you is most of these connectors are pretty straightforward. They only go in one way. This one is the LCD panel connector, and it is the most difficult. Now, if you look, there are a couple of these little tabs here. And in order to remove or insert this cable, you need to press both of these tabs down simultaneously. It's a little difficult, especially when you're trying to remove it, because it, I mean, you're going to need both hands and even pressure on both of these, so it's a little tricky. And then, of course, this is the connector for the antenna side, the antenna tuner. That's how it does fit in, so I did have to take that screw out. I like installing these with sort of opposite corners, because that helps align all the rest of them. Uh, the dogs are being very healthy. Piper is laying right behind me so she can touch my feet. Oh, and I'm not out on the back porch because, uh, well, it rained today quite a bit, and the back porch is uh, pretty much wet. So it's not exactly hospitable for doing work, so I use the next best thing, which is a big soft surface. The bed. All right, should we take bets to see if it works? Uh... I'm confident enough that I'm going to put the cover back on. Because if it doesn't work after that, I'll have to try something else to fix it, but 
it's much easier to store with the back on. So it's not that I'm that convinced it's going to work. It's just that it's more convenient in the long run. This is the top surface. It goes like this. And if you'll notice, there are these little tabs. They go into these slots. So the top goes in first and the bottom presses on. I guess I'll give you a, a shot of me trying to do this. I'll lace the cord in first. Ah. In the butt. Okay. That's uh, not quite right. There we go. That feels right. Everything goes together smoothly. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to put the screws in. You don't need to watch that. Comes the moment of trying. Now that turns it off. And I am getting nothing. sound. I'm not sure what that sound is. There is nothing connected to the TV. Okay, it is uh, playing music. The volume control works. The power works. Uh, any of the menu buttons do not work. I don't know what is going on with this TV. Um, that is some strange stuff. And I will, well, I'll try and do some other online, uh, online research to see if I can figure out what the hell is going on. But until then, TV repair fail!